are with Desiree Morgan and Giada Beckmeyer, both Washington Township residents and both employees of St. Joe's Hospital in Patterson, New Jersey. They're gonna speak a little bit about their background and history, and then we're gonna to get to what they do for their own mental health. Okay, who would like to go first? I'll go. Um, so my name's Gianna. I am a first year nurse. Um, I graduated last year from Catholic University in DC. Um, so this is my first year working. So it's definitely been a, a challenging year to start nursing um, with COVID and everything like that. Um, learned a lot though. Um, so when it came to mental health, we were taught in nursing school that it is just as important as your physical health. And um, we were taught different ways that people could take care of their mental health because your general health um, isn't complete without good mental health. Um, things that I usually do, um, you know, I, I love meditation. So before I go to bed, I meditate, I relax myself. Um, I, you know, as crazy as it sounds, like essential oils can go a long way. Um, one big thing that I think helped the most though was talking to my coworkers. Um, finding anybody that's in the same profession, whether it's the exact same thing or anything um, that you do um, in that spectrum is very important and very knowledgeable just to hear someone else feel the same way. And um, it makes you feel so much better to be in a proximity with someone who can relate to you. Um, so a form of therapy is just talking to someone and someone that understands you and gets you. Um, so that, that's for me. Okay, Gianna, okay. thank you for your perspective from a new nurse and now we have a very seasoned nurse, Desiree Morgan. Yeah, so I am Desiree Morgan. I've been a nurse for 17 years. Um, I have seen a lot, done a lot, um, good and bad. This was definitely something that rocked my entire world. Um, I am a, a nurse leader in my hospital, so I do have a lot of people who I am responsible for to make sure that they have what they need um, on a normal basis. When COVID hit, it just, it was all hands on deck. Um, I was, you know, in a position I hadn't been in in many years. Um, so I became nurse leader slash staff nurse. So my anxiety was high um, as well. And I think the thing I walk away with the most was my mental health was definitely on shaky grounds. I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't um, eating, I was dreaming mental, I was dreaming uh, about COVID, I was seeing patients that I had been taking care of, and I'm a seasoned nurse, so I can't mm -hmm. even imagine how devastating it was for our new nurses um, who had just come off of orientation or were in the middle of orientation when this happened and they were thrown into the fire. So um, for us personally, I, my specialty is in mental health, although I was working outside of my specialty during COVID. Um, I think what helps me the most is exercise, definitely exercising. I made sure to walk around the entire town often um, throughout COVID just to kind of clear my head and be alone with my own thoughts and my own feelings and actually go through those feelings and feel my feelings. I was not bottling them up. I know um, that that's the most damaging thing that I could have done. So I did feel what I was feeling and I allowed myself to feel that and I, I gave myself the space to feel that. I took long showers and cried and let it out and I felt better because of it. Um, I did have a lot of coworkers to rally around. Um, you know, we laughed through things that probably only nurses can laugh about. Um, we cried together um, and just shared openly how scared we were but you know, um, how guilty maybe we had felt because some of us got sick and others didn't. Um, some of us lost people and others hadn't. So it was a lot of, um, it was a lot of uh, tons of emotions all kind of hitting you at one time. But I think the thing that got us through and what continues to get me through is, is feeling how I really feel. You know, I, I'm, I'm not too proud to cry. I'm not too proud to uh, tell somebody that I'm not in a good space right now. Um, and we've created an environment at work that 
allows you to have that space and at home, you know, around my friends and my family. So I think it's super important to, to help with your mental health that way where you're not really carrying that baggage around and that, you know, I'm sleeping better. Um, so that's basically how I stay healthy. Yeah. Thank you guys so very much. But I have one question. Do you feel nursing in general, do they generally support each other or just was it amped up because of COVID? Do you feel that it's gonna go back to some old ways? Do you feel that, you know, we, you've learned some things as, you know, you guys as, a, as professionals that are gonna help you in going forward? I can speak to the fact that I think nursing in general, uh, we do rally against each other, around each other all the time. We are a support to each other because it's not always a great day even prior to COVID, mm -hmm. um, you know, if one nurse is having a bad day, chances are the whole unit is kind of helping in some way. And, and, and so you feel, you know, the pressure gets released by that. They, they quickly become your, your family. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I, I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to continue to be supportive, um, you know, just because by nature of who we are, like nurses are uh, compassionate caring people to do this kind of job anyway now that I'm tooting my own horn but yeah. I feel like you're called to the profession so you're surrounded by like-minded people I don't think it's gonna really um, once COVID hopefully it, we're seeing it get better um, and, and the, the support is still there so yeah I agree I think um, after this pandemic I think the general population has increased with their respect towards not only nurses but all essential care workers um, and we also learned that you, you can't take anything for granted, any position for granted at all. So we're here with Vicki Beck, who is also a nurse here um, in Washington Township and on the Board of Health. Um, as I'm interviewing more healthcare workers, we're trying to get different perspectives on emotional health and mental health. Um, not only uh, for what they've done during the pandemic, but um, you know, more specifically, um, I'd like to ask Becky about what she thinks about um, children's mental health and how actually COVID affected their mental health and what she and her nurses that she supervises have done during that time. Okay. Well, we are total believers in mindfulness. We have been practicing mindfulness for a couple of years, even before COVID. Um, if you go back, way back in time, years ago, maybe some people in town, I might have coached you through your labor. Um, and it was all about thinking about yourself, calming your body, relaxing everything around you. Mindfulness is interesting. You start by learning how to breathe and listen to your body and slow it down. You learn how to listen to what you're saying. You learn how to change your tone. You listen to the words that come out of your mouth and you realize they might be affecting somebody. You speak with kindness. You speak with gentleness. You speak with understanding. And that's the way we cope. Speak with understanding. Be able to listen to everybody. Be able to listen to yourself. Be able to care for your body and your mind. So during this pandemic, um, have you felt that mindfulness techniques have helped your students and the children that you deal with? Absolutely. We actually have Mindfulness Mondays where I'm very lucky um, that I have counselors in our district who actually send, send me their mindfulness exercises. Um, so they take care of us as well. And we do remind the children to think about what's going on. I mean, this, this is just a crazy time right now for everybody, forget it. Imagine being a child going through this and not understanding anything when we're adults going through things and not understanding what's going on. In everyday life, without COVID, as children understanding what happens in the world, we have a lot of difficulty with it. You have to put yourselves in their position and say, what am I doing? Where am I going? It's like every day you feel like you're missing your third period math test. And you have to get that out of your head and concentrate on what's going on right here and right now and center yourselves. And those, those are skills that we have to, as adults, learn and that children have to learn. The younger we teach it, the better off everybody is. Absolutely. Have you found that any of the apps like uh, Headspace or any 
those apps that um, I know I use for my clients, uh, I suggest to use them on the telephone and, and so forth. Have you found that that is helpful? I use Calm. Mm -hmm. It's um, C-A-L-M. First of all, it's free. I don't like to pay for apps. That's the first thing. And space um, you have to pay for now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and you don't pay for Calm. Yeah. Calm, you can, you can do a number of things. You can just it'll start your breathing and just listen to rain or animals or somebody reads a book, you know, Michael McConaughey reading you a book is very relaxing sometimes. Um, they'll read as long as you want. You can set it for five minutes, you can set it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever you feel you need. I find that app is, is very versatile for both children and adults. Okay, beautiful. Um, in closing, can you, can you share with us any other techniques that you feel parents or grandparents uh, can use with uh, the children that they deal with, um, say they're anxious about um, some residual effects about the pandemic and, you know, some people that they come in contact with. And we're, you know, can you share with us anything? Now, I'm going to tell you something very old school and it hasn't changed. Turn off the TV. Turn off the TV. Turn off the news. Have them turn off the computer for a little bit. Our kids are awesome about getting all the information on the computer. Mm -hmm. It's, unless you know the right information, where you get it from, it's, it's overload. It's way too much. Turn it off, sit down and talk, play a game of cards, play a game of, well, Candyland's a little too young for most <laughs> people. Do a puzzle and talk while you're doing it. Family time at this time is so, so, so important. And we don't get it because we're all too busy. Right. So you're saying that the social interaction and just doing some old-fashioned things is very helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. There's a commercial on TV where the kid's sitting there all by herself and um, coloring on the on the sidewalk and decides to make a uh, what's it called? Potsy we used to call it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. then watch the people who were, you know, just walking around minding their own business and ignoring people, and all of a sudden do the potsy as they're going on the sidewalk and smiling and laughing. The smile on that child's face is incredible. That's what we need. And I don't even know what the commercial's for. I honestly have no idea what the commercial is for. Great. But seeing the child smile, seeing the adults interact, seeing everybody smile, that's what we need more of right now. I agree with you. So folks, these are some of the techniques that we are recommending and some of the great work that's going on here in Washington Township coming from your Board of Health and our Mental Health and Stigma Free Committee. Um, I hope you utilize them and Vicki, thank you so much. Tell them, oh yeah, tell them what your, your title is and what, what, you know, a little bit about your background. I'm sorry I didn't ask you that. Oh, that's okay. Well, for um, about 18 years, or no, 12, I don't know how many years. I was the school nurse, I was the school nurse at Westwood High School. A lot of my students now have children. I've been to christenings and new baby showers and everything for my students. I'm now the nursing supervisor for Clifton Public Schools. And so well deserved. Thank you so much, Vicki. Another hometown hero. Thank you guys. Here we are with Rosemary Renaro, um, a senior nurse supervisor from Valley Health System and our Jillian Rosaretto from uh, Englewood Hospital. And we're here to talk about mental health and uh, tools that we could use during Mental Health Awareness Month. Who would like to go first? Well, as a senior nurse and Jillian's mentor, I'd like to begin by saying thank you for inviting us here today. We appreciate the idea of bringing this to the community's awareness. Uh, this year, as we heard many times a year like no other, we really spend a lot of time on focusing on self-care. Uh, each each uh, day I reflect back on what we've been through, and one of the um, things that come to mind is each night at 7 p.m., our community saluted us. And at 7 p.m., our entire block came out banging pots, mm. celebrating us, clapping, so nice. you know, we're yelling down the block, Come on, Jill, where's Jill outside? Aww. And we really felt the support Aww. from our community. So I thank you, and I thank our block of Stratford Court. I do too. Without the support from family and friends and our community and our coworkers, I don't think getting through this pandemic would have been possible. 
Um, that was another big thing that I focused on throughout the pandemic and just for mental health in general that I found people who showed me that love and support and were always there to talk to me, always there to be there for me when I needed it. So that was a big part of what I focused on. You know, another another strategy that I use each night is I have the app Three, um, three Good Things. So I look and I every night before I go to bed, I jot three, three, three things that I was grateful for. And I, I flipped through them and as I went through the week and I really had a lot to be thankful for. Definitely. Since I was a new nurse going into the pandemic, um, I noticed a lot of things that I had to be thankful for that originally I was taking for granted. Like I said before, family, friends, um, coworkers, superiors, pe mentors, people who were going to help me and teach me everything I needed to know in order to get through it, not just physically but mentally. And to have a lot of humor. Mm. We would yes. go out um, <laughs> go out at lunchtime and we would jump around and have dance contests in the office just to make light and don't take ourselves too seriously. So that was really, really important for me. And I'm someone who doesn't require a lot of sleep, but I really made a commitment to get into my bed before 11 p.m. every night. And I did go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Did that happen for you, Jill? Did you have trouble sleeping? Originally, yes, it was hard to fall asleep. Um, but eventually I was able to either put music on or I was able to even just have background music or uh, like a white noise machine that helped me fall asleep. That was a big part of, that would help me through yeah. the day. But yeah. yeah. You know, the, the power of positive energy and positive mm -hmm. thinking Every morning I would go into work and I'd say hello to my colleagues and say, I'm strong and I'm confident that we're going to get through this. And uh, that Amen. really permeated through the whole, the whole home, Valley Home Care and I'm proud of that. That's great. So do you re recommend these techniques in going forward? So I asked the other nurses that I interviewed, do you think this, this was just like a one-time thing that you're gonna utilize these techniques just for now, getting through the pandemic? Or do you feel like, you know, everybody has learned and will take all these techniques in going forward? Like, what do you guys think about that? Well, at each one of the tools I continue to use, I write down my three grateful things, I do my exercising every day, and I think it's a part of our life moving forward. Absolutely. I what agree. Do, yeah, what do you think about that, Julie? Yeah, so I think as a healthcare worker, you go through so much, not even through the pandemic, just every day. Yeah. You see a lot and it can yeah. get hard sometimes. So I think this was a good way for people, especially new nurses, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. learn what is best for them to help them get through and cope. Right, right. Do you find that your mentor, namely Rosemary Renoro, has helped you and do you recommend new nurses always to have a mentor in helping them get through, whether Definitely. through a pandemic or not? Definitely, because okay. like I said before, without that mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. and without someone there to help you and teach you and get you through difficult situations, right. it's almost impossible. Right, right. So we're here from Washington Township to thank our hometown heroes. And um, hopefully we can learn from all these mental health techniques and we love and support them so much. So hooray for Rosemary Renoro and Jillian Rosaretto. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Ever since COVID started, my grandma hasn't really been herself. She hasn't been out with her friends, she hasn't been to any restaurants, and she hasn't even done her favorite hobby, shopping. But I realized that she doesn't need her 82-year-old friends to have fun when she has me. Here are some of the activities me and my grandma do. Makeup. Nails games, jigsaw puzzles, watching TV, going on walks, cooking, doing hair, Playing with the cats, dancing,
unpacking the food shopping, patty cake, cleaning, and baking. These are just some of the things that me and my grandma do together that makes her happy and that makes me happy. You can do the same thing with seniors in our town and I guarantee it will make a big difference in your life and in their life. All Washington Township residents are encouraged to log on to the Washington Township website. Hit the green button which says stigma free slash mental health for mental health resources during COVID and life in general. I'm Laura Robertson and thank you.